What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at a real SQL interview question asked by Google during data scientists, data analysts and product analysts interviews. Let's get into it. This one's called English, German, French, Spanish speakers. It's marked as medium on stratastrategy.com, which is a platform where we're going to be able to implement our solution and run it against test cases to see whether it would be accepted during the real Google interview. The task says find IDs of companies that have more than 10 users who speak English, German, French or Spanish. We only have one table called playbook users. I think of a playbook as a kind of dictionary for users and a way to look up their information. In this case we have a user ID here which would be the primary key to look up a user. We have created at, which probably hints at when that user was created, company ID, language, activated at, when that user or account was activated, and state. Let's check the preview table to see where the state is, a location or the current state of their account. If we had preview, we can just view our example data. And we see that state actually refers to whether that account is active or not. We do have language in there, which seems to be very central to this question. A user ID which would allow us to count users by that user ID uh, because we might have duplicate rows in here or multiple entries for when that account becomes inactive maybe. It doesn't seem to be the case, it just seems to be one row per user but it's always nice to have a unique key as we have here with user ID. Um, we have company ID as well and our task, if we remember correctly, our task is to find IDs of companies. So the output should be company IDs that have more than 10 users who speak English, German, French, or Spanish. Seems like we have everything we need in here, so let's think about how we're gonna implement our solution. Apparently I can't talk properly today, but that's no issue because I wanted to try guiding through my solution by writing out some comments anyways. And I think that's a good thing to do during interviews as well, just to have that guideline and structure framework that the interviewer and you yourself can get back to. So I'd say first step, the comment here is to filter the table to English, German, French and Spanish speakers. Say filter table to these people that speak these languages. Then once we have that I would want to count users per company, still including that filter. So we should have a lookup table or it's just a temporary table that would give us the company ID and the user count. And these would all be foreign language speak or English, German, French or Spanish speakers. And then I would want another filter, um, filter company list to companies with more than 10 English, German, French or Spanish speakers. All right, I'm glad I copied that. Okay, so that seems to be a good way to split this problem up. Let's get into coming up with a solution for the first comment. So that should be pretty straightforward. We have a language column in there. Let's just select star for now from this table called playbook users and Let's just use a where filter to say language should be whoops, English or German or French or Spanish. So we could either do this and do a bit of copy paste. Say, yeah, that should all be an or. Uh, German. It's actually lowercase in here, so you should uh, look out for that. It's uppercase in the description, but lowercase in the actual column value. And let's see what that gives us. Sometimes you need to be careful with using OR and using parentheses and 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 be sure you have that logical connection right. But we do have English, French, German speakers in there. German as well, English, German, French, Spanish, yes. Um, but there's a bit of an easy way. You can use the in keyword and then just provide a, a list of, um, in this case, 
languages. So let's once again type out English. Oh, suit in order actually. German, French or Spanish. Okay, so that should work the same way. This is more of a lookup in terms of having this list or set of values and just checking where our language, whether our language value is in this list. So now that we have that filter in place, let's look at how to count users per company. It should be fairly easy. Let's just replace that star, select star with company ID since that's what we want to count by. And then count distinct user ID. Just to be sure that we're counting distinct users, one user should be one row, but there can always be data issues. So it's best to count by distinct user already since logically we want to find the amount of speakers and not amount of rows. So in order to count that by company, we still need to group by company ID. And that should already give us what we want. Just not going to have a proper column name for that count yet, but we don't really need that. So that should be the count of English, German, French and Spanish speakers per company. And now all that's left is to filter that company list to companies that have more than 10 of those speakers. There are quite a few here. So what we could do is either pack that into a subquery by putting parentheses around this and selecting company ID from that subquery where that count is bigger than 10. But an even better solution would be to use having, which allows you to do exactly that. Filter an aggregate function, in this case on that count. So we're gonna take that count away from the select statement, put it into the having clause and say that that count should be higher than 10. And that's all the magic. So we have a list of companies now that have more than 10 of those speakers. And the way that it works is that where is earlier in the order of execution in SQL. So we're first gonna filter that entire table to these speakers, then group by company AD and calculate that count. That count is not selected though. It's just to use in the having clause to check that that count is higher than 10 when we actually select company ID. We could do this in the subquery as well, but this makes it shorter and more readable in my opinion. So let's check whether that is an, ex uh, an accepted solution. It is, and that's pretty much it for that problem. As you can see, we were able to divide the problem quite nicely into three steps, and that also helps when you're stuck on any of these steps. For this problem, it's not too complicated, just follow these steps, um, but it's always good to kind of guide through your solution this way. If you want to try this problem or similar ones, head on over to stratastretch.com. I want to leave a sponsored link down below for you to check out some problems there and maybe sign up for a premium solution to support the channel. It's going to be it for me today. Consider subscribing as well to see more of these. I'm going to aim to release them every Sunday or so and see you in another one. Bye.